1969's More is a soundtrack to the film of the same name. That's pretty much all you need to know. Though, maybe this is what the band needed in the wake of Sid Barrett's departure. Focus on scoring this weird hippie movie. Something about a couple who runs off to Ibiza and takes a bunch of heroin, I don't know, I didn't watch it. But this seemed to be a good way to get a better feel of writing together, working in the studio, not as much pressure to release chart-topping singles. And to be honest, I kind of find this album to be more interesting than the singles they were putting out, or rather, sing goal. Point Me at the Sky was one notable failure. Yeah, they put this out in December of 68, and it was a huge flop. So much so that they essentially stopped making singles, at least ones that weren't included on their corresponding albums. Well, we can't do that. All right, what can we do? Well, we do long things then, you know. Though the B-side, a mostly instrumental jam called Careful With That Axe, Eugene, would become one of their classics. I'll talk about that one more in the next video. Clearly, this new incarnation of Pink Floyd was better suited for these long, spacey jams. Though there was still an attempt with more to create songs with lyrics and melodies. And with Roger Waters being the sole composer of five of these tunes, he was definitely becoming a prolific writer and the band's driving force, though still in a collaborative manner. Let's take a listen. Okay, to be honest, I don't know the exact order of which songs appear in the movie. I didn't feel like buying it on Amazon just to do this review. What is interesting is that most of their more conventional songs appear on side one, while side two is more of their experimental jams. Not much to say about the album artwork this time around. Hypnosis just took a still from the film and put a psychedelic filter on it. The album does open with sound effects, birds chirping, which gives it a bit of atmosphere at the beginning. Unfortunately, once the song comes in, it's kind of a morose acoustic number. It's a bit disappointing. It's sung by David Gilmour, who actually takes all lead vocals on this album, accompanied by Rick Wright's mournful organ and some keyboard effects at the end. In the context of the film, I believe it's meant to represent the protagonist spiraling into addiction. And the lyrics do capture that well enough, but why would they open the album with it? Again, it was for a soundtrack, except it for what it is. Hopefully the next song, the Nile song, is a little more upbeat. I was standing by the Nile. Oh my god. This is amazing. So, if you ever wanted to hear Pink Floyd do a Black Sabbath song one year before Black Sabbath's first album came out, then the Nile song is for you. Hell, Roger's scream on Careful With That Axe Eugene already sounds like death metal, so it's not completely out of character for them. I mean, it's not exactly groundbreaking in terms of songwriting, but it's easily one of the most entertaining Pink Floyd songs since Sid Barrett's departure. Ibiza bar, and no, I can't get a definitive answer on what the proper pronunciation of it is. If y'all want to have a war in the comments section over it, be my guest. But this song is also heavy, having more of an early Zeppelin feel. Some of Nick Mason's fills definitely feel like something Bonham would play. The song's pretty fun, but it's no Nile song. The rest of the album is more mellow. The best known song from the album is probably Cymbeline. And with the exception of Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun, this would be Roger Waters' best written tune up to this point. It's actually got a memorable chorus, and you can definitely hear him maturing as a lyricist with some intriguing imagery, including a couple clever shots at their record company. This sounds like Pink Floyd. Like, if you're a fan of their 70s output, Sibylline definitely represents the bridge between Piper and metal. Green is the Color is a nice song too, and even features Nick Mason's wife, Lindy, playing flute on it. Roger had been heavily influenced by the band's music from Big Pink, and you can definitely hear that sort of folky Americana influence here. Not as big a fan of the crying song, unless the idea was to make the listener cry. It's kind of a shame Rick doesn't have his own vocal song on this album, like a sequel to Remember a Day. Maybe he was burned by It Would Be So Nice's failure, but we'll get to hear him again soon enough. That's kind of about it for the conventional songs, but what about the instrumentals? Well, the first one, Up the Kyber, is an interesting jazz jam from Nick and Rick. There's also a pretty cool jam called Main Theme, which starts off with a slow gong drone, which would be incorporated into the Floyd's live set. It is what opens the film, and I kind of wish they led off with it instead of the heroin song. 
Apart from that, there's not much to talk about. My biggest disappointment has always been more blues. You'd think a blues jam with David Gilmour's guitar and the band backing him up would be pretty cool, but it never takes off. Quicksilver is like this album's version of Saucerful of Secrets, but not as memorable. And I guess that's about it. I mean, for just some soundtrack to some hippie film, it's not bad, but nothing too groundbreaking either. I'll admit, I enjoy it as a listen more than Saucerful, even if it's not quite as experimental. It sounds like the band has accepted their new direction and are still exploring sounds. However, it's not something I listen to frequently. Some of these tunes are worth checking out, so spotted fish rating from me. Definitely listen to the Nile song just for the novelty of hearing Pink Floyd do heavy metal. But also check out the wonderfully crafted cymbal line, Green is the Color, and the instrumental main theme. Well, that's it for more. It sounds like we're kind of getting back on track. What's next in there? 